Hello YouTube, Actosil again, and today we're looking at how to increase your gaming performance at least a little bit in Windows 10. It's important to note that there is not really a miracle cure for uh, improving your gaming performance overall in Windows 10, but there are a few certain things that you can do to improve things a little bit. Taken together, these will probably result in a bit of a performance boost for you, but don't expect a massive increase in frames, just the knowledge that you've boosted it as much as you can. While some of these might be really obvious and most of you will have done so already, some of them are a little less so and are definitely worth checking out. Let's go through them one by one. The first thing you want to do is to make sure that your power settings are set to high performance. If it's not visible in your power options on the control panel, just make sure you click the arrow next to show additional plans. Just enabling this normally should be enough, however you can click on change plan settings and then just tweak it a little bit further. The display timeout can be set to an option of your liking, as can the sleep timer. Clicking on advanced settings will allow you to set some further settings, including the disk timeout, which personally I keep at zero, as I don't want Windows to turn my mechanical disks off. Doing so prioritizes power delivery to the CPU and other components. If you have overclocked your CPU though, you will find that the voltage settings in the BIOS will most likely override this and you should be fine. Number 2. Graphics drivers and Windows updates. First of all, you want to make sure that you're always on the latest graphics drivers, as most of them result in a performance increase almost immediately. Optimizations are made all the time by both NVIDIA and AMD, and it's definitely worth grabbing the latest update when it's released. As you can see here, I've got version 441.12 of the NVIDIA drivers, which are actually already out of date, and by updating this I might see a small FPS gain in performance, if it's something that NVIDIA has addressed. To get your graphics drivers, you can just head to nvidia.com slash download slash index.aspx or search for NVIDIA drivers in Google. And then likewise for AMD, amd.com slash en slash support or search for AMD drivers in Google. Both of these sites will allow you to choose the version of your graphics card as well as your version of Windows, after which it will provide you with a download link for the latest drivers. There is not so much a need to uninstall the previous drivers prior to installing the new ones as they used to be. Both of these driver packages do have a clean install option in them and in 99% of cases that will suffice. As for Windows updates, you can navigate to PC settings or you can just press the Windows key and R and start typing PC, you will see settings pop up. Clicking on that will bring you to this screen after which you can go to update and security and make sure that you've applied the latest Windows updates. There are obviously some exceptions to this, as Microsoft does have a habit of releasing updates that break Windows. In most cases though, you should be fine. As you can see, I've elected to postpone a particular update, which is this one, just because I have read some reports on that one and I do use software which can be affected by it. The moment Microsoft releases a fix for that, it should be safe to go. Number 3. Setting the Windows Update Active Hours and the Windows Update Sharing Settings First step here would be to, while you're still in the Windows Update screen, go to Change Active Hours and make sure that you've set the active hours to a period of time in which you would typically be gaming. This prevents Windows from trying to apply updates and restart your computer while you're actually busy in a game. The other option you want to look at here is under Advanced Options. Once there, you click on Delivery Optimization and then definitely make sure that the Allow Downloads from Other PCs tick box is off. Leaving this on allows Windows to both download peer-to-peer -peer updates from other computers in your network or on the internet if the second box was ticked, but it also uploads parts of your updates via peer-to-peer -peer protocols to other Windows computers. Number 4. Disable Steam downloads while playing. By going into Steam and clicking on Settings, you will be greeted by this screen. Make sure you are on the download section of the screen, and then there are a few things to check. You can change the auto-update time period. Typically, I set this to a time outside of my usual gaming hours, but it's also important that if you do have a data cap from your internet service provider to set this to a free period if your service provider has that. It's also very important that you double check the allow downloads during gameplay checkbox. I personally leave it on, but in most cases you would want that turned off. Number 5. Full screen optimizations. Right-clicking on one of your game shortcuts or the game exe file and going to properties, you will see this window. Make sure you're on the compatibility tab and then go to change settings for all users. On the screen, you have to double check that the disable full screen optimizations checkbox is ticked. If the game requires you to run as administrator, make sure that is ticked as well. Clicking OK will bring you back to this screen and you will see that it's checked on this side as well. Full screen optimizations, while a handy feature from Windows, does sometimes conflict with the game's graphics engines. 
Number six, Discord overlay. While the Discord overlay will in most cases not cause you any issues at all, and in fact is sometimes necessary for optimal gameplay with your teammates, there are some games in which you can experience some issues with it, World of Warcraft being a prime example. Not in all cases, but in some it will give you a resolution error and just quit. This is mostly caused by the Discord overlays. To disable this you can just go into Discord, go to Discord options and then on the overlay screen make sure it's ticked off. Number 7. The Windows 10 Game Bar The Windows 10 Game Bar, while having some interesting features for gamers, is usually more of a hindrance. You can turn this off from Windows Settings and then going to Gaming and clicking Game Bar on the left. Removing the checkbox will disable the game bar. The game bar has been reported to, in some cases, cause some issues with CPU usage as well as FPS. Number 8. Game Mode While the Windows 10 game mode actually does bring quite a lot of advantages in terms of gaming performance, it can be detrimental when multitasking while gaming. If you usually have other applications open while gaming or if you do some occasional streaming, you might want to turn game mode off and see how it affects your performance. This is done in the same area where you turn off the game bar, but in this case you're going to click on game mode and then make sure the game mode setting is turned off. Number 9. Uninstalling bloatware. While this might seem like an obvious step, you'd be surprised just how many pieces of software you can accumulate over time. Going into control panel and then programs and features will allow you to see a list of all software installed on your computer. Make sure all of the unnecessary items on this list is uninstalled as it will result in not only some much needed disk space but in some cases might also lessen the load on your RAM and CPU. Number 10. Startup applications. You can check the applications that are marked to start automatically with Windows by going to your task manager and then clicking on the startup tab. In this list you will see all of the applications that start with Windows. Double check this to make sure that no unnecessary applications are running. Just be careful because some driver applications do have to, a good example being the Logitech Gaming Framework and Download Assistant. Luckily these days with Windows 10 it's not as bad as it used to be in the past. With Windows 8 and Windows XP especially you often have to go into MS Config and remove unwanted applications manually. That concludes the list of 10 items to improve your gaming experience a little bit in Windows 10. As mentioned before, it is important to keep in mind that you will not see a significant frame rate increase by doing all of these, but as we know, most gamers like to min max, and any frame rate increase is a good one. I hope you found this guide helpful. Please let me know in the comments down below if there are any points that I've missed, and I'll be sure to include them in a sequel. And as always, I'd like to remind you that I stream on Twitch as well during weekends. Link will be on your screen down below, and I'm also active on Twitter under the username Actorsal. Until next time, take care.